vagina does have a natural smell and it's unrealistic to think that it will smell of roses or perfume. It doesn't and it shouldn't. So I'm gonna take you through the different types of smells, what they mean and what you can do about them if they're not normal. I'm Dr. Simi, I'm a former surgeon, a current GP and a cosmetic doctor. Welcome to my channel where we discuss all things skin and women's health. And in today's video, I want to talk to you in particular about the different types of vaginal smells. I'm seeing increasing numbers of young women who are under so much pressure, whether it's from television, adverts, social media, blogs, just telling them that they need to look, feel, smell a certain way. And it's given really unrealistic expectations. The vagina does have a natural smell and it's unrealistic to think that it will smell of roses or perfume. It doesn't and it shouldn't. So why do vaginas have a scent? It's all to do with the pH of the vagina. The pH basically tells you how acidic or alkaline something is. So the pH of the normal vagina is about 3.5 to 4.5, which is due to the normal bacteria that live in the vagina, which are called lactobacilli. Now, anything that changes the pH of the vagina, so for example, semen or blood from having a period, changes the smell. So the first smell I want to talk about is an offensive or rotten smell. This smell can happen if you've forgotten to remove your tampon. And you might think, who forgets to remove their tampon? But actually it happens more often than you think. So for example, a woman puts a tampon in close to the end of her period when the flow is just really light. And then because the flow is so light, she doesn't need to change it and therefore she forgets to change it and just leaves it in. This encourages the growth of bacteria, which changes the pH of the vagina and affects the smell. Another instance could be a woman who puts a tampon in and then has sex with the tampon in. This can cause the tampon to go into hiding behind the cervix and then it can just be forgotten about until it starts causing problems with smells and possibly discharge as well. The good news is, although the tampon can go into hiding behind the cervix, it can't get lost. That's a question that I'm asked quite often if you can lose your tampon. It's not lost forever. Vagina is like a cul-de-sac or like a blind end of street. So you can eventually find the tampon. The only thing is that I can understand that it can be embarrassing to go in and have to explain the situation. But if this happens to you and you can't remove the tampon yourself, then please don't let that embarrassment stop you from seeking help. I've had to remove forgotten tampons several times in my career as a doctor so far. The first time that I had to do it was when I was a junior doctor working in A&E and a woman came in complaining of an offensive smell from her vagina which her boyfriend was also complaining about and also some vaginal discharge and when I examined inside the vagina I could see fluid which looked kind of yellow green and also something white which was sticking out so I used um, an instrument to pull this out and it was a tampon so needless to say she was absolutely mortified that she'd forgotten this tampon she was really embarrassed and I reassured her that actually this does happen more than people think. The second time I've had to do it, it wasn't actually a tampon that was forgotten in there, it was a swab. And till this day, I have no idea why this woman had a swab in her vagina. But again, once it was removed, the problem was solved and everything was back to normal. The next smell I want to talk about is described as fishy. And that's not something that I've made up. Women will literally come to my clinic and say, I have this vaginal discharge and it smells really fishy. There are two common reasons for this. One is called bacterial vaginosis and the other one is trichomonas vaginalis. So bacterial vaginosis is more common in conditions where the pH of the vagina is changed. So for example, douching or having sex because the semen can change the pH of the vagina. Bacterial vaginosis is a sexually associated infection, not a sexually transmitted infection. The difference being that a sexually associated infection you're more likely to have if you're somebody that is having sex or is sexually active, but it's not sexually transmitted in that you can't pass it on from person to person through sex. Bacterial vaginosis is due to an imbalance of the good and the bad bacteria in the vagina. And it leads to an overgrowth of the bad bacteria, which then gives the fishy smell. It can also be associated with a discharge that's white or cream, so if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, please see your doctor because it's actually quite treatable and we would use antibiotics. The next cause of a fishy vaginal discharge is trichomonas vaginalis. 
I'm sure you're like, Tricker what? Tricker Monas Vaginalis. Now this is a sexually transmitted infection and it's due to tiny parasites that pass into the vagina during sex. And they give this fishy vaginal discharge. It can also give a vaginal discharge that is itchy and that causes burning when you're passing urine. If you're experiencing these symptoms, this definitely needs treatment by a doctor. So please don't delay in seeing one. The other thing that we would need to do as doctors is that we would need to screen for other sexually transmitted infections such as gonorrhea and chlamydia. The next smell has been described as yeasty. This smell is due to vaginal thrush. Now thrush is really common. Most of us women will experience it at some stage in our life. And it gives um, a vaginal discharge that's usually white or cream, and it can be smooth or it can be lumpy and bumpy like cottage cheese. It's associated with vaginal itching, burning and stinging and soreness. So it just feels uncomfortable. So usually when women have thrush, they know that something is up. Thrush is due to an overgrowth of yeast that lives naturally in the vagina, but it gets out of hand because the pH has changed. And this allows the yeast to overgrow and give the smell and the discharge. It's treatable with anti-yeast medication, which can be taken as a single tablet, as a course of tablets, or it can be inserted into the vagina as a pessary. I usually warn my patients when I prescribe this um, and make sure that they are absolutely clear which tablets are for oral use and which ones are the pessaries and are for vaginal use, because you don't want to be getting that mixed up. Sometimes I will literally show them the prescription and say, this one is for the vagina, okay? Don't swallow it. The next smell is coppery. This tends to mean that there's blood in the vagina. So it's more common around the time of the period, especially at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period when the flow is quite low, which means the blood is hanging around for longer in the vagina and changing the pH and therefore giving that coppery smell. So the smell is described as metallic, which is not a surprise actually, because blood contains iron and iron is a metal. This smell tends to disappear soon after the period is over. The other reason that you can have a coppery or metallic smell from the vagina is due to having sex when the vagina is dry. So the additional friction from this can cause tiny cuts and scrapes in the vagina, which can bleed and give the coppery smell. So the way around this is to make sure that you are excited and aroused before having penetrative sex, or you can just use lubrication. The next smell is earthy. Now, this smell is due to sweating in the groin and the vaginal region. And this is not surprising because the groin and the lips of the vagina do have sweat glands. So if you're feeling nervous, anxious, if you've been exercising, you will sweat more there and this can give off the smell, which is a little bit like body odor. Sweat by itself doesn't actually smell of anything. It's when it mixes with the bacteria that's living on the skin that you can then get this smell. This is completely normal and it's nothing to worry about. It's usually quite a mild, faint smell and it disappears after having a shower. So wearing synthetic underwear can also encourage that area to become more sweaty and therefore can encourage the smell. So that can be improved by choosing cotton underwear and natural fibers instead of synthetic ones. The next smell is acidic or tangy, depending on how you want to describe it. Now this smell is normal. Remember that I already told you that the environment in the vagina is acidic because of this lactobacilli, which are the good bacteria. Having an acidic environment in the vagina is actually quite beneficial. It suppresses the growth of bad bacteria and helps to keep the vagina healthy. So this smell is nothing to worry about. It's usually quite faint and it's very normal. Next smell is chemical or bleachy. Now, if a woman comes to me and describes this kind of smell, I start thinking, is this something to do with urine? So I start thinking, does this woman have a problem with leakage of urine? Is that hanging around in the underwear and giving this characteristic smell? The other thing I think about is whether this woman has a urine infection. This can also give a characteristic kind of bleachy or ammonia type of smell. A urine infection is easily treated with antibiotics um, and if the problem is due to leakage of urine, that needs more investigation and more time. But with both of these problems, you should definitely seek the advice of a doctor. So that brings me to the end of the different vaginal smells. And I just want to show that ladies, there is no need to put pressure on yourself 
to think that the vagina needs to smell of roses. It doesn't. As long as the smell is mild and not offensive, it's probably normal. But of course, if it's associated with bleeding in between your periods, bleeding after sex, or other symptoms such as itching or burning when you're going to the toilet, then please do see your doctor so that you can get the correct treatment for you. If you've got any questions, please pop them down in the comments section below. And if you know someone that you think would find this video useful, please feel free to share it.